What's up everyone? Um, I'm gonna be editing a photo and I figure I can walk you guys through what my process is and hopefully you guys can learn something from it. And if you don't, feel free to reach out to me and I'd love to answer more specific questions. So this is um, an image I took at 35 millimeters with my 16 to 35 and I did this because I wanted to make the mountain just a little bit bigger than what it would have been at 16 to emphasize it a little bit. And I shot at 15 seconds, f3.5, and 6400 ISO to let in a good amount of light. And 6400 ISO is around how much I can open up my camera's sensitivity before it gets a little too noisy. And I chose f3.5 over f2.8, so the edges are a little bit sharper. And you can still see a couple of stars here are a little uh, warped, but it, it looks okay. And I did 15 seconds to um, minimize the amount of star trails. You can kind of see as I scroll through here, there's some star trails happening, but it's not too distracting. And I also got incredibly lucky with getting this shooting star right over Shasta. It was just a really awesome moment I was able to capture it, and I'm really thankful for that. So the first thing I want to do when editing, is I usually boost up the exposure. What I'll probably end up doing is making two copies of this, one for the foreground and one for the sky. So for the first one, I'll be working on for just the foreground. And it looks like around here, plus 1.65 or so, it looks like you're getting a good amount of detail. And I'll kind of lower the highlights, raise them up just to see what it looks like. It looks like this is a little bright area. So I'm gonna lower the highlights just to keep that a little tame over there. And it looks like for the shadows I wanna lower so when I raise it a little too much, it gets a little too noisy. When I lower it, it has a really nice, clean look. Nothing too crazy to the ground. And I'll boost up the whites to really add that punch back to where Shasta is. And that's looking pretty good. And I'll raise the blacks too to kind of make it a little softer. But I'll bring back some of the sharpness of the clarity. Somewhere less than plus 10. And it looks like it is a little bit too warm for my likings. But we'll be, we'll be fixing the color a little bit later, but for now we'll drag down the white balance a little bit. And that looks really good. A little bit too blue, but definitely right there it looks a lot nicer. Just the colors contrast each other better. And we'll go down to the tone curve and we'll kind of lower the highlights a little bit. As well as the lights and then the darks will raise and then the shadows will decrease to add a little bit more contrast and as i'm sure you may have seen i often use the sliders both directions to see what kind of effect it really is having with the photo and then i'll kind of do the fine adjustments after that then for split toning if you hold option and then click q it'll magnify the color being added by 100 percent, so you can really see the effect it's going to make and it looks like adding a nice bluish tint it's going to make the colors look really nice on the road and i'll do the same with shadows hold option click and drag until i see some colors that look nice and it looks like that's looking pretty good what i also notice is the yellow um on the road if you go up to luminance and add that little clicker and click this and boost it up it's going to brighten up and if you did too much it's going to darken and make it look a little weird but just move it up just a little bit. It's going to brighten that up a little bit. And then we're going to go to detail. So my favorite things about Lightroom is the ability for a beautiful noise reduction. And we'll actually start with actually doing the sharpening. And what I enjoy is the minimizing the radius, maximizing the detail. And if you hold option click over the masking, you can drag it and the white part shows where it's being sharpened and the black is where it's not. So you don't really need all that road to be sharpened, but on the edges it looks really good so around there looks nice and we'll go to noise reduction add the luminance and you can kind of see in this window here becomes a lot softer and this is a great tool to let you really see the, the fine details of what you're doing and for color we'll also lower the detail a little bit and raise the smoothness and we'll turn this off and on if you look in the window right here you'll be able to see how much difference it's making. So it's really gross, noisy looking, a lot of purple noise. But then with that, it makes it really smooth. And it makes it look a lot nicer to look at. It doesn't look like a noisy image. It, and that's something you really want to avoid when you're editing for star photos. 
and we'll add chromatic aberration. I'm not sure if it's going to do much, but usually on edges where there's light, it can get a little orange fringe or something, but it doesn't really hurt to add it on. Next, we're going to add dehaze, and it really adds a nice punch, especially in Asher photos. So we'll go plus 20 or so. So this is what we started with so far, and here's where we're at. And now we're going to go down. That's a right click on the mouse, create virtual copy. And now with the virtual copy, we're gonna edit the same photo, with all the same settings, and we're gonna edit just for the sky to get that exactly how we like. And I usually like adding even more dehaze in the sky to really make it punch out. And we're gonna take away all the color adjustments we did in the sky because it's a different uh, part of the image that reacts differently to these sliders. And that's the great thing about using virtual copies. You can really fine tune different parts of the image. So when you do bring in Photoshop, you really get the best parts edited the best of what they can be. And we'll lower the temperature even more to get a nice blue sky. That looks really good. We can zoom in and it looks like we added a little too much noise reduction so we'll kind of bring some of the details up and reduce that but we're going to go back to the um, basic exposure settings we're going to add more contrast by lowering the blacks lowering the shadows which are already lowered a significant amount and raising the highlights so that looks a little too dark so maybe not as much on the blacks and maybe decrease the saturation of the blue. It's almost a little too blue in the sky. And that looks pretty good. So this is before and after for the sky. And that's before and after for the road. And the difference between the two is not too much, but you can see in the sky right here, it's a little bit nice blue looking and the, the shooting star pops a little bit better because of that. So we're gonna select both of these layers edit them in as layers in Photoshop and it's going to bring into Photoshop stacked on top of each other and that's going to make it really easy to merge them. All right so now the two images are stacked on top of each other and now we're going to blend them. So we'll put the one with the sky on top the darker image on top and then click option and click this little circle within the rectangle and that's going to mask out and it's going to be completely black. So the way a mask works is if you will take off this layer to see there's nothing there. And if you press X to ensure that the white is the one you're painting and you set the opacity to 100 and the flow to 100 and B for brush, you're going to paint in white on the mask, which means the image is going to show up. But then if you press X again to switch these two colors, so you're painting black, it's going to erase that image. And this is going to allow you to go back and forth and really get the fine tunings. And it's never really deleting it, it's just hiding it in the mask. So you can see we made the sky a little bit more blue. And it looks like we got some a little bit of Shasta painted blue. So we're going to reduce the flow so it takes twice as many brushes to get to 100%. We're also going to decrease the opacity to let's say 60. And now we're gonna brush the mountain and it's gonna get rid of that blue glow that comes from the image above it. And it's gonna go over there and that looks pretty good. If you click backslash, the red's gonna show up what's not shown in the, in, what's shown in the mask wall. Where it's not red is shown. So you can kind of see where you want to brush because of that. And you can turn it on and off by pressing the slash. So that's without the sky, which it looks nice, but the sky doesn't really have that nice punch to it. And now this blue, it's a much better starting place. So we're going to merge these two layers together by pressing Command, Option, Shift, E. And that's going to make it into one layer. And I have a Photoshop script already programmed but called the Orton Effect, but I'll explain what it does. And it creates a layer of Gaussian blur at 18% opacity, and then there's a mask that's white, which means it shows up, and it's going to allow me to edit it. So with the Gaussian layer, 
it really softens and blurs the image, but nothing too crazy. And we'll go to Image, Adjustments, Brightness, and Contrast to add additional contrast to this blurred layer. And we'll boost the contrast open up a bunch. And we'll play around with the brightness, but it looks like lowering it adds a nice mood to the image. And now we're going to go to that layer mask, make sure it's set to the black, and 60% opacity, 50% flow is good for what we're going to be doing. And we're going to be erasing the edges of this mask where it blurs so that way it, it remains sharp. So if we turn it on and off we can see how it affects all the areas except where we're painting it. Right up there, just on the edges of the mountain and the hill. And then the other part of the Orton effect is a sharpening and that's done through a high pass filter with overlay blend and what you can see is that it sharpens everything in the image and it almost adds a little bit of noise. So we're going to remove that by using a plugin by Tony Kuiper's Luminosity Mask. And we'll go to the adding lights. And this is available free. So if you look up Tony Kuiper Luminosity Mask, it creates actions for you. And it's going to create these masks based off the luminosity values. So I'm going to get one where it looks like it's only sharpening stars, or there's only white where the stars are. And by selecting, or command clicking that layer, that little box right there, it creates a selection. And then we can go back to the masking button, and it's going to create a mask. Option clicking this shows the mask that's showing up where, where this layer is. So if I turn it on and off, you can see it sharpens the sky, but not all the noise in between. And then by going to the brush and brushing in white, you can add in that sharpening back to where your brush is. I'm going on the mountain just to make it look a little bit sharper, as well as on these edges to also add a nice sharpness and a contrast between the two layers. So real quick, let's just see what we've done so far in Photoshop. We've added the Orton effect and we've merged the two layers. So this was before Photoshop and this is after just a little bit. And we're gonna continue doing a couple more adjustments in here real quick before we bring it back in the Lightroom for finishing touches. We're gonna add a color balance, and this is where you can really add a nice mood to the image. We'll zoom in a little bit just so we get enough of the sky, enough of the road, so we know what the image is gonna look like. And we'll start with midtones, and I kinda of wanna add a little bit of blue in the image to make it a little bit cooler. But it adds a little too much blue, so we can kind of balance using these other sliders to make it even more blue, or bring back some red to make it not too much blue overall. We'll do the same with the magenta and green, drag it back and forth, and then kind of like the magenta a little bit, it makes it a little bit more contrasty on the road. We'll go to highlights as well, and we'll adjust them. And it, Looks like adding the yellow makes the road look really good and almost a really nice color throughout it. And we'll play with them a little bit more. Magenta looks pretty good too. And adding a little bit of cyan kind of gets the sky looking nice. And we'll go to shadows for the one or three more adjustments for the color. And cyan looks really good. And that looks like a good amount of yellow and blue mix. And maybe this one will add something. Yeah, that looks really good. Going in the magenta makes it a little bit more blue. So that's before the color and that's after. And I think it just looks like a much better contrast. And I think that's about ready to bring back into Lightroom for just a couple more adjustments before it's ready. All right, so we're back in Lightroom and this is the edited version of the image after Photoshop. This is what it looked like after Lightroom edits, and this is the raw, and now this is what it looks like so far in Lightroom. And we're gonna do some radial filters. We're gonna zoom out a bunch so we can really make the radial filter feather, and by clicking this, or Shift M, Shift M, it will open up the radial filter option. 
and we're going to be lowering the exposure on everything around the mountain. So we don't invert it, but we feather it 100%. And I'm just using the extreme amount just to see where I'm affecting. So we're going to spread it out a little bit, make it really long so it's going to keep both the mountain and the road lit up. And maybe spreading out a little bit more. That looks pretty good. And Roth's not going to do that much, but we're going to drag it down a little bit. And we're going to brush and add up to the sky so there's not a weird pillar of light for some reason over it. So we're going to brush that in and darken it up. And that looks like a little too much. So we're going to lower the flow and make it 10. So that means it's going to take 10 strokes to eventually get to what that actual adjustment is. So we can really do some fine tuning and make it look a little more clean. And we'll do the same on the road to really add some dark edges. And that looks pretty good. And we're going to add another one to brighten the part of the image that we want the viewer to look at. So we're going to invert it this time get around the mountain and around the road and we'll zoom out zoom back in and we'll overdo it just so we can guarantee what we're hitting is what we want so we'll go to brush erase and make it 20 so this can take five strokes to get rid of the effects we made and we don't want it on the sky too much so we'll go there, and I don't really need on that part of the road, or that part, and we'll obviously tone it back down, but it's going to make a nice little glow, and we'll do a couple more close looks at the photo, it looks like, as I suspected, there's going to be some hot pixels, and that's just where the pixel doesn't record any data, so we're going to use the Q shortcut to get to the spot removal and kind of just look around for the little pixels that didn't record any data so the image really is a clean image it looks like there's a couple up here and that looks like a light so i'll keep that in but a couple up here you can kind of see and they just really bother the final image from being what it should look like and that's the final image from what I I can imagine it looking like and this is what it was so we went from this to that with just a couple quick tools using Lightroom Photoshop and then Lightroom again hope you guys enjoyed this tutorial and let me know if you have any other questions about this image other kind of photography tutorials you like to see whether that's time-lapse shooting astrophotography or just anything you could think of all right, well, thank you so much, guys. I hope you enjoyed.